How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to walk you through a scenario where I have a continuously running sump pump but it's not actually moving any water. No water is moving through this inch and a half PVC past the check valve and out the discharge pipe. So this can be a tough scenario and actually in this instance the same setup failed on me a couple days back during a heavy rain and that did cause a bit of water damage. So now I got some carpet I need to remove and hopefully I can help you avoid that same scenario. So let's walk through the simple troubleshooting steps on how to get this back up and running and make sure it doesn't happen again. So a little bit later on, I'll actually be pulling the sump pump out to show you some more details in the final troubleshooting steps, but just giving you some bearings here on the setup. So we have our main sump pit here with a cover, and that is just a loose fitting cover. I prefer a cover like that because I can actually see from that big slot what's going on down in the pit, which I do not like to have a cover for a standard sump pump that completely seals and I can't see what's going on because it does limit what I can do in terms of troubleshooting. I have a battery backup system here in the lower left hand corner and then I have two power cords that actually go into the outlet up here. Those two power cords is because there's actually two pumps. There's the primary pump and a backup secondary pump down in the pit so that's why those two power cords are there. So let's show you actually what's going on down in the pit and the first troubleshooting step. So you can see in this scenario with the cover off, I actually do have some water movement in the pit. But if I go outside and check my discharge pipe and I can really just hear there's no water moving through the inch and a half PVC past, this is called the check valve, past the check valve. So... I am getting power to my pump. Something's going on down there, but it's definitely not moving any water. Now you could be facing a scenario where maybe you don't have water in your pit. Maybe it's all the way down and your pump is still just running. In that scenario, what you wanna do is usually check your power cords here. You can see I have a lot of different power cords. So I wanna check those and make sure none of those are catching on the float. For this unit, the float is on the right hand side. So I can feel that the float is moving like it should and also it's moving up and down. It's just in the up position because the pit is full of water. So it's doing what it's doing. It's turning the pump on. But in your case, if you didn't have water in the pit, your float might be stuck in the up position possibly a power cords holding it in the up position, possibly the sump pump is pressed against the sidewall and it's holding you in the up position. So just check that and make sure your float is moving freely and has nothing that is binding it up. So the second step I'd want to move on to is checking my check valve. So there is some scenarios where your pump could be pumping out and the water table should be actually pretty low, but your check valve is actually not coming back down and closing after the cycle. So then that can put you into a perpetual cycle of water flowing. So I'll go ahead and remove this check valve. First, I'm gonna unplug the sump pump just to make sure I don't have the sump pump trying to push out water while I'm removing the check valve. So removing the check valve is pretty easy. You'll have four band clamps, two on the top, two on the bottom. I'm just gonna remove and loosen the top band clamp and the bottom band clamp. All that's needed to do that is a 5 16 inch nut driver. And then we can click, and then we can quickly loosen those up so we can remove that check valve for inspection. And there usually is a little bit of play within the inch and a half PVC coming down and meeting up with the check valve where you will be able to move it without really repositioning an inch and a half pipe or your sump pump itself. And just remember, don't lose that band clamp down in your pit so we can reinstall it later on. So checking the function of the check valve, it's gonna be a little hard for you to see, but all I'm doing is making sure I understand the direction of flow. So the check valve should be positioned like this with the water flowing vertically. I'm gonna put a screwdriver through and I'm just gonna exercise that actual gate or the check valve itself. 
making sure it can move up and then close back down. This one looks like it is working correctly. I have one that's a little easier to see because uh, it has the clear section in the middle. So again, the flow of direction would be vertical. And then what you would like to see is you're able to open that valve up. It's able to open up. And then once the flow of water would stop, it would close back down because most of us are gonna have a pretty long vertical section of pipe through this. So once the flow stops in this direction, without that check, all that water in the pipe would wanna rush back down into your pit and then that can put you in that cycle that we talked about. So that's the purpose of the check valve and why you need a functioning check valve. Okay, so we checked the float, step number one looks good. We've checked the check valve, that also looks good in step number two. Now I'm gonna pull this sump pump out of the pit and then we'll get a closer look to see what's going on on step three, what could be our issue. So here's a closer look at the setup that I had going on so we can talk about step three. Now this is a Barracuda pump model number 92911 and it has your primary, here's your primary sump pump. Okay, with your base, you have an impeller in the base. That's actually what moves the water. You have your float here. You can hear clicking. The float in this state would be off. And then there's where the water level needs to rise. And you want this play in here because you don't want it just cycling on and off very quickly. So when the pump would turn off, the pit would have to raise up to this level before it turns on. And then it would continue to run until the float came back down to that level and turned it off. So that's how the float works. It's working correctly. The switch is turning on our main pump on and off. Now the secondary pump over here also has a float. Now this float, as expected, is higher up. So if this pump were to fail and not run, then this float would go into action and do the same thing. It'd have to raise all the way up to here, turn on, and then your secondary pump would go to work and that would pump out the water. Then those two pumps come together, the two discharge pipes come together into a Y higher up, and then you'd have your main check valve that we looked at earlier. So that's how this unit sets up. The thing I don't, like about this unit. Um, it's very complex. So I have many more band clamps down here. Initially when this failed, I, I had pulled the pump out and this pipe, this lower band clamp was a little loose. And you can see how that would be a failure. So if this band clamp was loose, this pump would continue to pump, but instead of pumping water out, because it needs a it needs to overcome that vertical elevation or what's called head pressure. It could be just cycling the water internally, flowing water out at this point here, and that could be your failure mode. So if you have a complex primary secondary setup such as this, check all your band clamps here. But there is one more thing you need, and it is what I am suspecting my failure might be. Now, believe it or not, between your pump and then your check valve in the PVC line, you actually want to have a 1 8 inch hole here, which is called a weep hole. And why you want to have that is because it can avoid a scenario where your pump gets locked from a pocket of air that can build up inside this pipe. So I am actually going to drill a 1 8 of an inch hole at a 45 degree angle pointing down. So when the water flows up, if it does leak out, which it will leak out from there, it'll actually shoot the water down opposed to up, which might go out of your pit. So pretty simple stuff. I'm just gonna take my 1 8 of an inch drill bit. And I'll just drill that hole again, pointing down. So with my weep hole installed for step three, checking to see if you have a weep hole and checking to make sure all of your band clamps, your pipes are in good shape, such that if your pump is pumping, it's gonna be able to deliver 
flow through your inch and a half PVC and out your discharge outside. So let's test this guy out and see if we can move some water. Now when you set your sump pump back in, again, we want to make sure that our floats, I have a float here for my primary, float there for my secondary, and always use the handle. There's usually always a handle on top of your sump pump that you should be using to actually lift it out. Don't hold on to the pipes, don't hold on to the power cords, just use that handle. And now we'll go ahead and reinstall our check valve since we did confirm that it's functioning properly. So if that missing weep hole was my issue and my overall unit was locked up, once I plug this in, I would expect the pump to now start flowing pumping past the check valve, out the discharge outside, and this water level to start going down. So let's check it out. Okay, it's definitely starting to pump water out. I can hear water flowing through past the check valve. And now this water level will start going down, but it might take a little while because there is actually water not only in the pit, but I have three different pipes coming in. I have this three inch corrugated, this three inch corrugated, and a four inch corrugated on the back. So I have water actually backed up in those pipes, which will continue to flow into the pit until all that water is drained out. And that is also why I'm able to have a failure such as this, and because it's not raining outside, even though water is being delivered from this four inch corrugated on the back, this pipe goes to my, this pipe goes to another pit down in the basement, which is, has a trash pump in it. That primary purpose is to flow the shower, vanity drain, and toilet out of the downstairs basement bathroom. But this pipe will also connect up with some overflow and save me an issue such as this where I don't have heavy rain and my pump is not working. So it's always good to know what the setup you have and if you have any backups like that as well. All right, so I'm gonna let this run and drain out all the water. I do wanna show you while it's still running you can see that we pull and why we angle it down because during the pumping cycle, you will get that pressurized water shooting out there. So that's why you want to point that down and not up because that would be shooting right outside the pit if you didn't angle it the correct direction. If you're still having issues after confirming the float was working as expected, your check valve is working as expected, you don't have any loose band clamps or any other issues with the pipes or the actual couplers on your setup, and then also you confirmed you have a weep hole between the pump itself and the check valve. If all that's checking out and you're still getting that humming, continuous running and no water movement, you might want to consider replacing your sump pump. Now for me, that Barracuda setup, I'm not super confident in long-term. Just the complexity with the primary, the secondary, all those additional band clamps, it's not necessarily known to be the highest end brand. And this is something that I want to be as bulletproof as possible. So I'm actually gonna be installing on the next video, this Zoller M95, which is very well respected on the market. It is all cast except for a plastic base. The switching mechanism has been proven out over decades. So it is a better solution, at least for my instance, and it's gonna simplify everything for me, but I will also consider how am I gonna have redundancy. So check out this video right here. You'll see the full install process just in case you're still having issues and it's time to get a new pump. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.